What's up guys? Um, back again with another exciting end of the year vlog. And for this list, I'm going to be talking about my top 5 video games of 2020. So, to tell you the truth, there hasn't really been that many releases that I was like super stoked for. So, <laughs> honestly, a lot of these I'm just going to be pulling out of my ass because... You know, like I said, there just hasn't been that many groundbreaking, groundbreaking titles. Groundbreaking. <laughs> there hasn't been that many groundbreaking titles this year that I can talk about. Maybe there's maybe a couple, and you know, those couple that you'll see are going to be included in this list. So let's get started. Number five, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. To tell you the truth. I was genuinely kind of stoked to find out that this game was going to be a direct sequel to the first Black Ops game because I absolutely loved the first Black Ops and up until probably after Black Ops 3 was when I just stopped keeping up with Call of Duty in general. Like to be fair, all the futuristic bullshit just kind of grew stale and then I was a little late to the World War II party. I did play it, I liked it, the mechanics were a little sluggish, but at the same time that did kind of take me back to when I played World at War, which is, I mean, you know, same setting, different story, different characters and whatnot, and I'm pretty sure it was probably the last time that Sledgehammer ever decided to develop a game with Activision, but other than that, I didn't even bother with Black Ops 4. I did play the new Modern Warfare, I loved it a lot, but you know, that's not a Treyarch product. The thing about Cold War that excited me the most was to see like a good number of my favorite characters come back for the campaign. And also the zombie maps, the <laughs> maps, the zombie map is really fun. Die Machine, such a good one. If you've seen my Christmas caroling episode on my gaming channel, you'll understand what I'm referring to. It's so fun, like, even right now it has, like, a limited edition Christmas version of Die Machine, which is Jingle Hells, and it's so fun. And a lot easier to configure as well compared to the old games. Like, the old zombie the old zombie maps, like, in the first three Black Ops games, I didn't play four, so he left to enlighten me on that. Those required skill. You know, you actually had to be good at those maps. But this one is a lot more versatile, a lot more accessible to you know new and returning players i am a returning player because honestly there's no fucking way i could have done 25 rounds in a map like kino or transit or that one on black ops 3 that came with the game so you know the campaign was okay it did prove the point on what the cold war was about it was nice to see characters like woods hudson and mason being brought back to the Black Ops storyline, despite the fact that they're not even played by the same people anymore. But, yeah. Black Ops Cold War takes my number 5 spot. Number 4. Resident Evil 3. The remake, not the original. Because the original had Nemesis in the title, but this one does not have anything additional in the title. I had high expectations for Resident Evil 3. And that's solely because of the remake of the second game. Like, the remake of the second game took my expectations and probably doubled exceeding them because, like, the second game was just amazing. It was it was a mix of old and new when it came to Resident Evil. Like, yeah, you got probably the same story that you played in the second game. I didn't finish the original second game because I was fucking terrible at those fixed camera angle games. But yeah, the, the second game really... Had, had my expectations high for this remake. And then I go to play it, and you know, it's still the same feel. Still the same mechanics and everything. The only downside was that the story was a lot shorter. Like, there was only one story mode that you could play on this game, and it was his Jill. And here and there, you would switch between Carlos and herself. But I was a little let down because of, sh of, of the short story mode. And, you know, this was when I when I still wasn't playing online so I didn't get to, I didn't get a chance to test out uh, Project Resistance I'm sure it's fun I'm sure it has some good some good fun game modes I, just like I said I'm, I'm not normally an online player the only reason I play online nowadays is just because I'm bored I can totally understand the inclusion of Project Resistance 
being a contributor to why you know people paid full price for the game despite the fact that it was so short and yet it still took up probably the same size as Resident Evil 2 in terms of memory but you know it was nice to see it was nice to see um, Jill in front and center of the story because I kind of feel like she doesn't get enough spotlight attention and her character was done so well in the third Resident Evil game you know just the fact that the campaign was so short is the reason why it's so low on this list. It's a very limited list. But nonetheless, I still enjoyed it. I probably would replay it. It has a lot of replay value. Just not so soon because the sooner you replay it, the sooner you're going to get tired of it. So, number four, Resident Evil 3. Number three, Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Oh my gosh. Guys, when I say that this is my serotonin boost of the year, I'm not kidding. Because... You know, this has been a really dark year, even for gaming, because a lot a, a lot of good titles are probably, you know, some good titles are being postponed due to the pandemic, and a lot are probably going to be um, postponed even, even after the pandemic is over, because, you know, the current state of next-gen consoles is, is honestly in turmoil right now, because, you know, people are buying, people are buying the new consoles only to sell them at double prices, which is considered scalping, which it is. It's it's been really it's been a really dark year in terms of gaming, in terms of filming, all sorts of aspects. And the only thing to get me through all of this has been Miles Morales. Well, it's one of the main things, you know, cuz honestly a game this short <laughs> it's not going to get me through the whole year, but it's it's still really fun. Like it's probably the most fun I've had since playing, you know, it's it's predecessor Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4. Tell you the truth, Despite how short it was, it was amazing. I fucking love this game. There's absolutely nothing that can top this in terms of the mechanics that Insomnia Games has set out for this game. Like, yeah, it is a, it's almost a full price DLC because the only way you're paying full price for this game is if you buy the, the Ultimate Edition, which I'm pretty sure is only on PlayStation 5. But if it's on PlayStation 4, please let me know because I'm trying to get this from my brother. <laughs> You know, it, it had such a good story, even for how short it was. The the main villain did seem kind of cliche. Because, you know, it's like, ooh, evil corporation, man, bad. But, you know, like, it, it was still a, it's, it's still a fun game overall. There was a lot of side quests to do, just like there was in the in Marvel Spider-Man. But, you know, a lot shorter. And I do feel like... Miles Morales was done a little dirty in terms of that because he deserves his own full-length story. Miles Morales has so much fucking potential as a Spider-Man character. He deserves so much more than what this game gave him. And honestly, if they did start putting out DLC for this game, which would be kind of a stretch since considering this is an expansion on an, and on itself, I would buy it in a heartbeat. Because I want every excuse to continue playing this game. But I don't want to tarnish its value. Does that make sense? So... You know, amazing mechanics. Miles Morales basically took what Spider-Man PS4 did and made them better. The only downside to this to this game, obviously, other than the fact that it's short, is how they fucking butchered um, Peter Parker's face. Like, he actually looked like an adolescent in the original Sp Spider-Man PS4. And then they remastered it for the PS5 if you got the ultimate edition of Miles Morales. And he looks like a fucking child. He looks like a baby. Like, he's 24 in this game, and he looks 17. Maybe even younger. Like, why would Insomniac Games do that to him? And the remaster, you should have just left it alone. You should have just, you know, like I said, remaster it for the for the current engine on next-generation consoles, and just, just left it as it is. Don't touch his face. But it's too fucking late now, because he looks like a kid. Yes, that honestly pissed me off, because I loved... Spider-Man on PS4. That was my that was one of my favorite fucking games of 2018. If you saw that list, and it bummed me out so fucking much, because it's like, wow, a grown-up Spider-Man. What could be better than this? They took that and just fucking butchered it. But other than that, Miles Morales is an amazing video game. Even if it is just an expansion to Spider-Man on the PS4. Insomniac Games does list it as an actual successor, which is, I mean, you're kind of tossing.
giving Miles Morales a bone at this point, labeling it as such. It's an expansion. Just leave it at that. Just be real with us. It's an expansion that deserves so much more than what you gave it. But hey, at least you don't have to pay full retail price for it, so... That is my number three spot for this list. Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Number two, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Ooh, why is this so high on the list? I will begin to explain why. So, this was the first game that I bought this year. Like, there's absolutely nothing more serotonin boosting than Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. For me, at least. This this is probably the first like full-length RPG Dragon Ball game since Boost Fury. I didn't play Boost Fury, but I watched my friends play it. It looks so much fun. It looks just just as fun as Legacy of Goku 2, which it's a follow-up to Legacy of Goku 2, so honestly, you know, why? what's what's the difference there? But you know, this was this was a dream Dragon Ball game cuz it's like you it's an RPG. It's a fighter. And you know, the fighting part of this game isn't the entire focus. Like, you get to go fishing, you get to do side quests, you get to do these silly fucking races, like, on tractors and shit, like... Who would have thought that you could play as Gohan doing a fucking tractor race in a Dragon Ball Z game? And not to mention, the story mode is 90 fucking hours long. Like, who has 90 hours to devote to a single Dragon Ball game? I'll tell you who I do, goddammit. <laughs> This was so fucking fun. Like, even if the fighting mechanics were just a little limited, I could totally understand that this was not the exact premise of Kakarot. Because there was so much more to Kakarot than just the fighting. You know, every single piece of the anime is covered in this in this game. Even parts that were covered, you know, in the manga. Like, manga-exclusive parts actually took place in this, in this game, which makes me really happy because it's like... Personally, I'm not a devout manga reader. Because I just, not that I don't like manga, I'm just very terrible keeping up with manga chapters. Like, I hadn't even read the new chapters of Super. I fucking love this game. It It's my dream Dragon Ball game, and that makes me so fucking happy. Because I felt like my opinion was heard. And I felt like, I didn't really have any opinions on Dragon Ball games or like what kind of games I wanted to play. I just, I just felt like I was finally targeted. I just felt like I was finally part of a target audience when it came to a Dragon Ball game. And it makes me so happy. It was like, yes, I love RPG games. I love fighting games. Kakarot takes both of those, puts them together, boom. Perfect product. At least for me. And not to mention, the DLCs are really fun too. Like, both of the Power, Power Awakens chapters, if you have the Season Pass. I mean, you don't need the Season Pass, but it's better if you have it. It's honestly really fun. I like the fact that this game is also covering Super. Because it's like, wow, you get to relive your childhood and your adolescence all at the same time. But if you want to wait, you know, get whatever Ultimate Edition they put out for this game, go for it. That's entirely up to you. I didn't pre-order it, because I kind of forgot about it. I was a little conflicted, because it's like, you know what, it's probably going to be a rehashed Dragon Ball product. But I'm probably going to buy it anyway, because I'm a diehard Dragon Ball fan. It was not a rehashed product. It was astounding, to say the least. And that's what makes me happy. So, yeah, if you absolutely want to play the entire Dragon Ball anime start to fucking finish and then continue with Super if you want to if you don't mind buying the DLCs please get this game it's so fucking fun I have not had this much fun in so long I'm scared to go back and replay it cuz you know I don't like tarnishing the value of a video game I do not like this year is probably probably been the only year that I don't go back and play my catalog and you know Kakarot's among that which is really fun. So, there you have it. Number two, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Number one, Doom Eternal. Holy shit. You know, I got a friend of mine, actually, the friend that I was playing my Christmas caroling episode with, who has been telling me nonstop about the Doom games. So, this year, after I was wrapping up my Fighter Z Lex plays, I ultimately gave in went and got the Slayer's Collection and Eternal. And after I finished my Fighter Z Let's Plays, I went back and played all of those. I love the first two Doom games. The third one's okay, it's really meh. Doom 2016, that shit is amazing. Why did I miss out on that upon release? But oh well, better late than never, I guess. And then there's Doom Eternal, which is like, holy fucking shit, bro, it's so fun. 
I normally am not crazy about first person shooter games except for like you know Far Cry maybe in Battlefield Doom is the cherry on top Doom is so fucking fun bro like even like even the new games give the old ones a run for its money like the entire story of Doom Eternal is just so fucking good it does kind of it does kind of wreck on some of the events in Doom 2016 but that's okay because it's absolutely worth it why did this game not win game of the year is fucking beyond me between 2016 and eternal i kind of feel like uh, who, who even makes this game id right i think bethesda, bethesda just uh, publishes it but you know between 2016 and eternal it does kind of feel like ad is just taking notes from their old games which obviously because they fucking made those two i think i don't remember you can correct me on that they just take they just take notes from the old games and put them in the new. If you played the first two games, you encountered Cyber Demon what a lot. And you play 2016, he's only a boss, which is fine because he was a great fucking boss fight. But in Doom Eternal, apparently they he's fucking called a tyrant now. No, that motherfucker is still Cyber Demon. I don't care what you fucking say. Doom Eternal is such a flawless fucking first person shooter game, and I love that. I absolutely adore that it's everything in a nutshell and it's and it's not like you know a limited campaign like Call of Duty or Battlefield or fucking Resident Evil 3 I hate to set that as an example but that's what it's become I hate that it's come to that but it's such a good fucking game like the, the campaign will last you a fucking lifetime if you're like me you know who has a bit of a limited schedule or at least someone who did honestly if you can name a better first-person shooter game that came out this year that that's better than Doom Eternal, I will kiss your ass. But you know what? That's not going to fucking happen because there is no first-person shooter game that's better than Doom Eternal that came out this year. So have fucking fun. <laughs> Flawless first-person shooter game. Not surprised that it was a Game of the Year candidate at the Game Awards because it's fucking great. You know, it could have taken all the competition on by itself, but you know, some people have... Different opinions. I guess the committee at the Game Awards was like, these are all so good. You know, Doom Eternal's made a comeback since the 90s, but we're just going to ignore it. Okay, that's fine. No, it's not. I'm fucking pissed about that. Uh, truthfully, when I say this on the bottom of my head, bottom of my heart, even if it didn't win at the Game Awards, Doom Eternal is my 2020 game of the year. That's a good fucking game, bro. If you disagree, that's, that's on you. That's not on me. That's on you. <laughs> I just wish I could access like the, the master levels. If, if the master levels were anything like they were in the second Doom, I would go back and play the fuck out of that game, but that doesn't seem to be happening because I have no idea how the master levels in this game work, so. My loss, I guess. Or maybe ID just kind of gave up and was just like, nah, we'll just focus on the ancient gods. The ancient gods is so fucking fun. Even on the easiest difficulty, it's some of the hardest shit I've ever played. And I have not raged this much in gaming ever since playing the fucking what was it the towers of time in mortal kombat 11 Whew. you want to see me rage quit just watch me play the ancient gods i'm not gonna live stream it though because it's not and it's, it's not something i should live stream you definitely gotta watch me play it if you want to see me rage get pissed probably just pass away <laughs> but that concludes my top five video games of 2020 i want to know what your favorite games are of this year please let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe ring the bell i'll leave the link to my gaming channel because i still have a lot planned for that and please i will do my best to upload regularly because i feel like i've been doing that a lot this year between you know malefic sketch dragon balls fighter z let's plays and my biggest project since there's always help the big sketch i do have a lot more big sketch videos planned i just don't know when i'm going to execute them you'll have to give me some time on that but you know 2021 even if this pandemic doesn't end anytime soon i have a lot planned i have so much planned like i'm trying to occupy myself while this pandemic winds down and you know is actually under control so have a good day guys